Hi! In this episode, we consume a REST-based service with Node. We then refactor our code into something a bit more reusable. There is an abundance of packages out there to consume REST services already. But, I still think it's a good idea to know what these packages have to deal with under the hood. So let's go. This is the service we're going to consume. I just headed up in my browser, and this is the result we got. This is just a normal JS file. I've set up a sublime text build which executes this file with node, so that we can see the results in here without dropping into terminal. To consume the service we need to require HTTP, which is bundled with node. We build up some options for the request we need to make to the service. First, we specify the host part of the URL, and the TCP port for the service. The path option is the rest of the URL. And the HTTP method, which in our case is a gate. We call the request function on HTTP with our options and the callback handler. In this handler, we initialize a new empty string. We use the on function to subscribe to the data event on the response to be notified when we receive a chunk of data, which we append to the body variable. We also want to know when the response is done where we don't expect any more data. We do this by calling the on function again to subscribe to the end event. Now that we know the body contains the whole response, we deserialize it by calling json.parse. Finally, we log it to the console. In order to execute this, we need to call end on the request so that it knows that we are done with the request and that it should send it to the server. Oops, seems I made a little mistake in the URL. Okay, now when we run it, you can see the response coming back from the service. So that's all good and well, but let's refactor this to make it a bit more generic. We create a function called getJSON, which is two parameter options for the request and a callback function. We just move this code into the function. Let's flesh out a call to this function before we make the function capable of handling it. We pass the options and a callback function to getJSON. In the callback function, we first deal with errors. In case we have an error, we log it to the console and stop execution. Otherwise, we log the result to the console. Now we make the getJSON function work correctly. First, we make the variable a bit more generic and then pass the value onto the callback function. Let's hook up the error handling now. To do that, we need to hook into the error events on the request and on the response. Because our callback function already has the right signature, we just hook it directly to the events. Now when we change this URL to something fake, directory.tv, you can see our error logic in the callback function kicks in correctly. That's it for this episode. Like I said, there is no shortage for REST clients in NPM, but it's always good to know how to do the lower level stuff yourself. See you soon!